Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. And as you note, uh, right off the bat, I start off normally with most of the shows right now, sort of like the sort of supporting the, the vets, if you will. And uh, I noticed as I was coming to the studio today, as usual, there are folks on the corner, especially now with the holidays and the night, suggesting they are vets, basically with handouts, with the cans mm-hmm. and this, that, and the other. And I know for a fact they're not vets. Mm. So a lot of times people, you know, we're in a festive sort of a move and we want to give. But I would suggest this uh, in the future, if you wouldn't mind, is that tell them to show you the card. I mean, give, give us a close shot on that, will you? Tell them to show you your card. Show us the card. Every vet should have a card. Every vet should have a card. If they don't have a card, do not give them any money. Tell them to go to the VA. And just tell them. That, in fact, you could Google it on your smartphone. And say VA located in Vancouver or Portland. But the bottom line, do not give them any money. These people are just, they are frauds. In fact, of late, even in the news, people have been dressing in for tigs and, mm-hmm. and other paraphernalia, even stripes, stars and stripes, I mean, stripes and whatever, state in the fact that they're in the service. They're not in the service. And the fact, I mean, until we can correct that issue, that's another issue that I'm lobbying for. I mean, that's, another, that's another problem. In fact, I might even add also to many of these organizations in many ways are frauds. We have problems and whatever. I suggest, and well, I'll talk a little bit more about that point. When one of our senior congressmen here from the state of Oregon, I called his office and uh, their military, his military advisor, and when I started talking to him about the possibility of certifying and registering all of these organizations and, and the list being, being at the VA. So if you wanted to give to an organization, you'd call up the VA, and if they are legitimate, then fine, you give it to them. Otherwise, don't. But I suggested that, hey, this is something I think we need to look at and possibly maybe go to the VA. I mean, put put a, put a, some policy or legislation together to get that done. His response to me was that they were not interested in another bureaucracy. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll, I will talk about this a little bit more. I'll name the person. Uh, I'll, in fact, I'll even name the congressperson who, whose office this came from. But I'll follow up on that piece. But anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. And as you know, I've got the hat on the paraphernalia. I just want these vets, and especially use parents, if you will, who who have vets at home. Many many vets in my in my era, the Vietnam era area, tend not to want to talk about the war aspect of it. They're sick. They're having some terrible problems. But please get them out to the VA. Get them a card at least. Get them that card, and then they'll take it from there and basically, i.e., talk to them about it and talk to whether or not they they're they're in need of their benefits and whatever. So do that for me. Okay, that's my announcement for today. So now let's get down to the show here. As you know, last week. We did, a, we did a piece, a very important piece, and I would suggest that you, for those of you who are just basically tuning in to this particular show, that you go back to the last week's show. And as you know, all you have to do is just, just basically uh, Google the Oregon Voters Digest, uh, uh, just Oregon Voters Digest, it will come on the screen, and, and you just hit the schedule, the shows and whatever, it will come up, and you, we'll be talk, we'll, we're talking about, we'll be talking about sex, edu- sex in the schools, if you will. And uh, I'm just giving just a basic kind of a deal. And uh, some of the things we, we talked about was that uh, one of the questions that I had was, what happened at Grant High School? What happened sexing in Plaskenine at Sun and Seaside? Are these kids guilty of child porn? Are the law and the educational establishment hypocritical? What do the regulations actually require by age group? Uh, what are students being taught at the Adolescent Sexuality Con- Conference about gender identity, sex with multiple partners at young age, abstinence as defined by, by CAP? Pregnancy as a social transmitted disease and abortion. Safe practice on on, on anal sex. I mean, I mean, it just goes on and on, you know. And it's I mean, it's opening up. And the reason why I'm I'm bringing that point up is that uh, here locally, here in the metropolitan area, here, it's so easy. Uh, this stuff was going on among uh, the poor here within the community, among blacks, among Hispanics, you know, i.e. in that particular arena, and nothing was said. I mean, a gentleman by the name of Bill Diaz was uh, very much involved in this process. They were demonstrating on Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, 
before Planned Parenthood moved in the area. Uh, they moved in, they bought a real large facility. Uh, and in fact, in all due respect, there was another issue. They bought it from a, an African American who owned the, the property, uh, sold the property, uh, i.e. With, uh, with, with the okay, if you will, of PDC, Portland Development Commission. They got, and they've got this large project, nobody said anything. We even made the point. Why, why put this abortion clinic on Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard? If you want to do it this way, then go back two, two blocks the other way on either side, but not on Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. They went on anyway, and you can do anything like this in this area. Now, all of a sudden, guess what? This sex thing has come out. It's come out. And Portland Public School is the largest school district in the state of Oregon. And, uh, and the majority of, uh, majority of African Americans, and i.e. the poor, Hispanics, and whatever, live within the metropolitan area. And in all due respect, it's a major problem. So nothing's being said. Well, guess what? Uh, one of the questions I'm going to be asking these, my, my two guests is here with me today is that uh, what, uh, and so what do you say to parents and community who say this would never happen in my school? What is happening throughout Oregon? It's happening throughout Oregon. And we talked a little bit about it uh, last week, but now what we're going to do, we're going to talk to two parents that are here with me today. Two parents that are here with me today in Lori Porter and Lisa Maloney. Okay, and welcome, welcome, folks. Thank you okay. for having us. And I'll just give you a little quickie, quickie background, and I'm going to let them expand on it. Uh, Lori Porter, who, Lori Porter is co founder and director of Parents' Rights in Education, holds a master's in both education and business administration. She has been a public school teacher in Oregon for 23 plus years. You might have seen her because, in all due respect, she was on the show once before with Bill Diaz. She and her dedicated team are committed to informing, okay? It's very important. Lisa Maloney, as Lisa right here, started her own window covering business in 2006. Small business person, signature window treatments. She, she um, by the way, has four children. She serves her community, volunteering her local church as a foster parent and a member of the Skepoos, Skepoos mm -hmm. School Board. Okay, Skepoos School Board. She's a member of the school board, but again, a parent, a parent of four kids. And all of a sudden, this thing is happening in her community. Mm -hmm. And she's saying, hey, wait a minute, something's wrong here. I mean, it just blows your mind. So what we're going to do now, we're going to talk to two parents. And we're going to talk to one of which happens to be a school teacher, but the other who happens to be a school board member. And, uh, and hopefully you'll understand where I'm coming from. And by the way, I've always said this. Discuss this among yourselves. It's important. It's very important. You, it, you'd be, it'd be, you would be surprised to know what's going on in the classroom. In the classroom. In fact, if they, they would not, if the conferences have been going on in the classroom for a long time. Now the conferences are outside of the school, <laughs> outside of the classroom, and we're having problems. And as you know, and I'll just be right up front, just going right back to the Portland Public Schools, uh, it was uh, it was very highlighted when uh, when they appointed our present school superintendent uh, for the Portland Public Schools, and that was uh, and she happens to have been gay. And it, it, we, we objected very seriously about the fact that they promoted it. They made it. They made it I mean, just promoting it to the kids about how she gay she was and and how uh, and Hannah partner and the, and the like. And parents were naturally concerned about what do I do, Bruce? You know, I've got a job here. I work here. Mm -hmm. And if I say anything here in the city of Portland about gays or this, that, and the other, guess what? I'm cut. I'm cut off and whatever. Well, it's time we stand up. Stand up. And I'm not knocking, you know, in terms of what you are, what you are, and who you are, and whatever, et cetera, et cetera. But the fact we're talking about our future, we're talking about our kids, we're talking about those formative years when kids should be taught the ABCs, if you will, how to survive, how to how to raise families, how to perpetuate our way of life. So I don't want to go on and on and that. Let's get down with our let's get down with our our parents that are here, and they're going to give us the what they heard about this whole year. They've done the research, and let's go with it. Okay. Who's going to be first? Who's going to do the first? Who's going to be first? Lori? I'll go first. Go on, Lori. Talk to um, us. I got wind of this conference back in 2010. And um, as a teacher, I was sitting and listening to some of this information that was being presented. One of the keynote speakers talking to the general audience. Again, one third of the attendees being minors, young people, talking about porn. Young people, how? Like when? What, what? Sixth grade. Sixth grade. Let's let's say what the conference is. We yeah. haven't established okay. that. Right. I okay. don't think no yet, have Just we? dig in whenever. Yeah. This conference that I attended is the Adolescent Sexuality Conference, mm -hmm. and it takes place in Seaside. It has for years, and this is a conference that teachers, counselors, students, healthcare providers go 
um, it's a yearly event and it is they go and get their marching orders as to what is sex what kind of sex education is best practice and uh, what should be taken out to their school districts and <clears throat> on the steering committee of this conference is the Oregon Department of Education, the hmm. Oregon Health Authority, Oregon DHS, Oregon Sexual Assault Task Force, Planned Parenthood, Cascade AIDS Project, and others. So I was sitting there observing the content that was being presented to kids and adults like. And frankly, some of the material, if I was to share this with a student on the side of the street, mm -hmm. you would be calling the police. I, w I would be getting arrested. Mm -hmm. So when I sat there as a teacher, as a mandatory reporter, mm -hmm. thinking of, oh my goodness, this is something that is to be shared to students and community. But our parent, what are, parents don't know about this. Mm -hmm. um, and frankly, school boards don't always know about what the content is. So it was during that discovery of finding out what was being covered uh, or presented and then the fact that I was teaching and we were reviewing sex ed curriculum and reviewing our school policies and all of this is kind of wrapped up in all of that it is truly a, a difficult situation to know what's the best thing for a parent to do when they get wind of something like this mm. And Lisa, how did you get into this sex education piece? Well, when one of my kids, my youngest daughter, was in sixth grade and I was having a, a parent-teacher conference and, and the teacher was concerned with me saying, we have to start teaching sex ed. And I said, well, like what? <laughs> And she didn't know. She goes, well, I don't know, but they said we have to. And I said, well, well what are you going to teach? What, where's the material? And she goes, well, we haven't seen it yet. We just know we have to. <laughs> she didn't know anything. And I said, well, when you get it, I want to know. I want to see it. <laughs> and so when it came uh, out, mm -hmm. and the after they sent the teachers to a two-day training, mm -hmm. and this is how it works with comprehensive sexuality education, which is really the issue within the school system, is they sent the teachers to a two-day training mm -hmm. to and told them this was uh, part of the law, they had to do it, and um, if you don't do it, you're not in compliance. And so the teachers sit there, okay, okay. And at the end of the two days, they said, well, here's the curriculum. Hmm. And it was called Making a Difference. And I looked at it and a, and a few of us other parents knew it was coming. And when we saw the, the materials in there that was talked about safe behaviors as um, masturbation, grinding, uh, I mean, all, really yeah, all? Yes, for students. The teacher is supposed to get those answers when they're talking about, you know, how to share your uh, affections, express your, your sexual expressions with mm -hmm. somebody else. Now, this is for sixth graders, so you can imagine how yeah. it progresses on. But that's where I first became alerted, and and my antennas went up. And I and I this is you know a message I have to parents mm -hmm. all the time is when you hear the words health and safety mm -hmm. in your school. Uh, for your kids, that should send up a red flag. You, you have to find out what that means because they hide behind, it's hidden behind language that says it was an abstinence-based program, uh, it's healthy relationships, it's we want to reduce unintended pregnancies and, and those kind of things. So um, where that all culminates in a lot of this material that we have here mm -hmm. and is the Adolescent Sexuality Conference, which Lori was just talking about, mm -hmm. and COIN6, if anybody goes to their website, mm -hmm. investigative uh, news stories can find three stories on that where they expose this. And um, because Lori first went in 2010, and you went again when in 2012, 12. Mm -hmm. and then I went this past year just as a concerned citizen to see what's going on there. and. I mean, it will tell you a lot because the keynote speaker that they had is a sex toy shop owner. His name is Corey Silverberg. Sex what? Sex toy shop owner from Ontario, Canada. His name's Corey Silverberg. You can look him up on the internet. So, so that's a keynote speaker they bring in. They had um, workshops. Corey himself taught a couple workshops besides giving a keynote. One was called Teledildonics, which means the remote use of sex toys over the internet. And pardon me for the conversation again. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I hope your viewers, sure. if they have yeah. children, they'll sure. you know, watch this later. Okay. 
but teledildonics means um, the remote use of sex toys over the internet. So if you're in one location and your partner's in another location, mm -hmm. you can control these sex toys on each other and watch it via Skype. And all of this information and audios of that information is on our website, parentsrightsined.net. You can see all that material there and mm -hmm. all of the material from this conference. Another um, workshop he did was about, uh, it, it was about internet porn. And it, it took the students and the people in the class, and it was many students, mm -hmm. on how to create a virtual, virual avatar. porn. An av one was an avatar or... Uh, What's avatar? You don't even an avatar is like a virtual online person mm -hmm. that you can control yes. and, and, and and he talked about pony play in there and you can be a part animal part person bdsm do do things that are against the rules but it's okay you know in this context you know just experiment with sexual identities and such bdsm i mean I'm, B I'm bdsm saying. bondage sadomasochistic yeah, bonding kind of, okay mm -hmm. yeah yeah bondage. and this was the there were sixth graders in the presence mm -hmm. of that. Of that point. Mm -hmm. And um, and then also he gave specific uh, website, showed the website called Virtual Femme, and that was on the Coin6 report. Um, I'm going on that and how you program on this website a person to engage in things like oral sex and, and different virtual pornography. Mm -hmm. And... That is not, I believe, what most parents want their kids to learn. And that is what this conference, if this is an adolescent sexuality conference, is billed as a, um, professional development for teachers to take this information back to their classroom. Now, do I think that every teacher who goes to that is introducing virtual uh, porn I don't think so. I, I don't think most of them are. However, they're being told it's their job. that yeah, this is all fine this. Yeah, and this is yeah. good information. Yeah, yeah, this is professional yeah, development. Yeah. And the kids, let alone the children that wow. are attending, um, one young girl also told me that um, they, there was a website that uh, showed a dark, it was a avatar virtual site mm -hmm. that showed a woman tied up in a chair um and that was very you know concerning for her but those are the images that they're being told and and shown and we have handouts okay let's go back a couple of things i'd like to ask yeah. i'm okay. sure they were curious when you, you mentioned 2010 you went mm -hmm. to the london john then how far back does it go in regards to this conference this conference has been going on for 30 plus years 30 what 30, about 32, 33 years. It's in been, Oregon. In Oregon. And it's just from 2010 to 2014, I have seen progressive push the envelope kind of content. Uh, but a lot of it's been going on under the radar. You know, there are people that work for the Oregon Department of Education, Oregon Health Authority, that, that do a, a great job. But I want to know, why are our tax dollars right. okay. yeah. being spent on this? Why are kids leaving school you know, Monday and a Tuesday to go to this conference, pa teachers going, counselors going, and are, are feel like they have the liberty then of coming back to their school kids, even coming back and teaching their peers this information? Um, parents would be, are shocked, frankly, they're, they're shocked across the state once and thanks to coin uh, story coming yeah. out and we don't you know there are things they can do which we can get to right, right, um, right. but first they have to know what's happening and mm -hmm. and not all you know school school districts are sending kids to this mm -hmm. some don't even realize that they are but and it's not our our beef is not with the school so much or the teachers or the school board members. Ultimately, we want to know why Oregon Department of Education, Oregon Health Authority, DHS, and, and those agencies are putting this on with minors in mind. Wow, wow, wow. And, you know, school boards and school districts, um, they hear these nice benign sounding mm -hmm. words, uh, healthy sexuality, safety, best practice, but you've got to, You've got to ask them to define these terms um, because so much 
I mean, we know after being absorbed with this for so many years what that truly means. And the school boards are busy. Mm -hmm. But I will say that I'm so pleased that there are some school boards, uh, school districts that have said, you know what, we're not sending kids to this anymore. Now that we know, we're not we're not going to send teachers. Who are some of the major school districts that were there at present? Well, it's 30 years, though. I mean, that's a, I'm well, sure they're, uh, ones that I personally saw, saw yeah. their buses, know okay. that they had students, um, Newburgh. St. Helens, um, uh, Clackamas. Clackamas County Schools, um, Woodburn, mm -hmm. and Clatskanai School District. And a lot of them, even if the school district has a school-based health center, mm -hmm. some of the kids go through that organization that the school board, and this is what happened, other board members told me in of uh, St. Helens that they didn't even know that they sent kids because they went through their school-based health center. Mm -hmm. And there's many of those schools that are doing that and they're taking the kids as, uh, you know, little representatives for mm -hmm. sexual health. Mm -hmm. So they've, they've taken the schools. In fact, St. Helens school, they took 11 school children uh, to this conference and it was on their website the school-based health center's website and and now that information is gone they've they've somehow taken that down they don't want people to know that mm -hmm. that they took those kids but hmm. they do know well it. you know another thing that comes to mind 30 years ago where was the media then i mean i should i understand you said six okay on six but but where were that 30 years ago Mm -hmm. I mean, normally that's basically we, that's, that's our dependent, if you will, to sort of keep us informed as to what's mm -hmm. going on around mm -hmm. us. But 30 years ago, and what about our legislature? 30 years ago, mm -hmm. and who was governor during that particular time? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And who initiated that? Who signed off, if you will, signed off, if you will, tax dollars, if you will, to subject our kids to this kind of education aspect of it? Now, you know, this is really an eye opener because now all of a sudden, you know, there's always this big push about sexuality mm -hmm. and it's been going on for years mm -hmm. so you know where did it come from now i can't blame the kids i mean they're there for that formative years to right. be taught something mm -hmm. and here we've got adults if you will mm -hmm. that are doing this mm -hmm. unbeknowing to the to the parents about what's going on and why their kids are coming home and and we're all sorts of paraphernalia mm -hmm. and whatever but they don't know what's going on a lot of times kids don't share this mm -hmm. right, right. Oh, of course this. they don't share this kind of stuff i mean it's ridiculous mom and dad would never tell me anything like this or anybody okay. that. Talk Bruce, to, me. to that note, um, in Salem Kaiser, they sent students as well. Mm -hmm. But Salem Kaiser has what's called the Teen Outreach Program, okay. TOP, which yeah. Portland Public School has as well. And that program can only be taught in the schools from Planned Parenthood representatives. And the idea is to break down barriers. Wow. Um, uh, through time, it might be through service learning, whatever, but it's Planned Parent coming in and making, you know, and, and building relationships with these kids, surveying mm -hmm. these kids, mm -hmm. encourage them to discuss their identities and their sexual experiences and feelings and thoughts. And um, I really encourage parents to have a conversation with, with mm -hmm. their children. It has been amazing. I've seen stories across the nation where kids will pick up their phone because something just doesn't seem right. Hmm. The, the teacher's discussing or demonstrating this, mm -hmm. so they pick up a phone and they take a picture of it, and that's very powerful. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there's the eyes and the ears to this. I mean, they're right there. And, and there are some teachers who naturally will know, you know, this is a line we shouldn't cross. But the problem is we're seeing in districts across the state is their policies are vague. Their policies are, are so open-ended that you're really at the mercy of what the school or the, the teacher, where they take the conversation mm -hmm. or the discussion. You know, mixed gender classrooms. In Oregon, it's K through 12, oh. comprehensive sex education. Um, comprehensive. comprehensive. That's, and what that's, does that's that right. even yeah, mean? What does that mean? Right. So, and what does a kindergarten need to know about yeah. sex? Yeah. Um, and that is determined at the school level and how they interpret it and what they choose, or, or even a teacher. It, I mean, we we don't really have clear guidelines other than it's supposed to be taught. So how that's interpreted, that's why this conference, this adolescent sexuality conference, is really the the highlight and the peak of K through 12 mm -hmm. comprehensive sexuality mm -hmm. education. If there's a couple more things we can share with you, because they are alarming and people do need to know 
how bad it is okay. um, in there. Well, let's do this, but at the same time, I want to make mention about the fact now we can understand what Bill Diaz was all about. Uh, right. Why he was fired. Hmm. Why this superintendent who's here, who's present now in Portland Public School, allowed Parent Parenthood, if you will, to go in his class. This guy is a, a well-renowned math teacher, if you will, at Benson High School. Hmm. And he just walked in. And as a result of that, he was fired. And there's a union that's supposedly re supposed to represent it. But regardless, at the end of the day, he was fired. Mm -hmm. And the man was fired from his job. And he was there trying to bring this stuff up. Uh, mm -hmm. So unfortunately, I, we weren't able to talk about this part of the deal. Mm -hmm. We did initially when we started. But now is the time. We've got to do something about this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I'm sorry. What were some of the stuff that were, were being handed out? You said you were talking um, about? There's, these are three booklets that were available. Front, you just talk I, about it. I'll, I'll put them up here and, on the screen. And they, well, I got a few things yeah, highlighted. Okay, good. Uh, this just one is a here. young male's guide. You got that, buddy? Yeah, straight, uh, straighten it up. Put it for guys who like guys. A young male guy. For guys who like guys. Okay. And in here it talks about um, the one of these, uh, the mouth, proper oral care and how to be have safe oral sex by not eating crunchy foods before engaging. And these in oral are being handed sex. to the kids and everyone. Yes. Yes, this is available on tables. They just keep refilling the tables as people take the books. Jesus. It's by Cascade AIDS Project. They are on the steering committee mm -hmm. of the conference. And these have been given out for years, not just this past year. Visuals. Yes. Penis. So you can tell, yeah, the, you can tell this is written for, for young people. Wow. And another page that's very alarming is the page that endorses uh, methamphetamine use on this page here. And it, it talks about why people use meth for a lot of different re reasons and it says meth is widely used for a million reasons desire to have lots of sex with lots of partners for long periods cheap. ability to dance for hours and hours uh, it's cheap uh, the high lasts a while lose all sexual inhibitions that's why people use meth and then it goes on to say well you know don't overdo it watch your intake and, and things like that so cheap. i don't I'm just interrupt one more <laughs> The title of the conference this year mm -hmm. was Building Blocks of Youth Sexual Health. Building Blocks Building of blocks. Youth Sexual Health. I just want to interject that. Wow. And this is what's there. <laughs> yeah. This is another just uh, book I, I read a few months before the conference. Someone had it from a previous year, How to Get Your Groove On Fluid Free. Fluid Free. Fluid Free. Um, <laughs> and it talks about phone this sex. One, put, that, put it up there. There you go. Phone sex. Uh, sexting different things to do um and, and again this is directed towards children and you read this and and you you can hardly sleep at night because it's like who would do this um and another one is called uh dry humping saves lives and it's all about similar sort of behaviors yeah, 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 yeah. of dry humping i mean you can imagine it talks about uh masturbation in here and you have a little picture picture of a little it. girl and on the masturbation page and it encourages watching porn together is part of it At these all of these again are on our website yes and there's also more about phone sex text flirting um to do that and it also reminds you at the end to make sure to Erase your messages before your parents see them. Hmm. So it's it's encouraging young people to engage in all types of sexual and pre-sexual behaviors, which is only going to get them having sex. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is going on? It, it's very this disturbing. Is it is very, very and disturbing. And this is a, a sponsor of the conference, Cascade AIDS Project, and these were available to all. Now, again, do we think these are, you know, what the teacher's using right. in class? Not necessarily. Do they, do some teachers in some schools? Probably somewhere. The curriculum that um, Lisa was mentioning, making a difference, sixth grade abstinence-based curriculum, it is encouraging the teacher to talk to her students of all the different things you can do with your hands and with your mouth, wow. abstinence-based. Wow. So, and you know, I really am pleased that Herb was here uh, and spoke with you mm -hmm. because Herb, um, there are lots of laws that parents have that they can hang on to, parents and guardians mm -hmm. can hang on to. I mean, this is shocking. It is disturbing. shocking. And we, I didn't know people it. have 
we people have to know what's what's going on and hold the Oregon Department of Education, Oregon Health Authority, and others accountable. But but you know what can I do tomorrow with my child? There are there are legal rights that you have. When they say this is the law, we must teach comprehensive K through 12 comprehensive sex education. It's the law. Well, the law goes both ways. Parents have rights. It's not just the kids calling the shots. It's not just and, and districts need to realize they have rights. They don't have to just cower to what the ODE is telling them they need to use or teach in their in their districts. Mm -hmm. I mean, so. thirty years. I mean, this is this is this is alarming. I mean, the, the, the mere fact. What happened to the legislature? We we need to have well, another election. They <laughs> they've been giving and approving, and I, and I I noticed Herb Gray last right, right. week talked about that what it has happened at the legislature they have the same person who headed up this conference his mm -hmm. name is brad victor he's one of the key people mm -hmm. he's also been for years the sexuality specialist with the oregon department of education so you have this paid wait, wait, hold on now yeah. okay, we're, we're going to take a short break because i want because i want to make sure we get this very very clear and then hopefully the state superintendent of education uh, our present governor mm -hmm. gets hopper is we'll be looking at the show. We'll make sure we email it to them, and hopefully we'll be able to have him come on the show to sort of educate us. I would like to know. I would like to know why. People would like to know. This is not a right-wing effort, mm -hmm. if you will. This is about an Oregon effort for our kids. Yeah. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back, folks. Again, I'm Bruce Broussard, and here we're right up front with the Oregon Voters Digest, and we're talking about what's happening in our schools today. For the last 30 years or so, both the legislature, the media, and the and the people responsible for funding this kind of thing, government money, if you will, we didn't know. We didn't know. And it's about our kids, our futures. Now we understand what's going on with our states. You know, and it's not the kids' fault. Mm -hmm. It's the adults' fault. And it's, 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 it's the adults, if you will, you know, as they say about the, it's a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. We've lost it, folks. It is not. That's what we're trying to get back to, if you will. Okay. As you know, we, we left off kind of, we, both Lisa and, and Lori were basically getting into some of the heavyweight stuff. Well, here's one of the ones right off front with it. Did we, did we, get, we get that on the, on the screen? Did we get that? We get down the screen. Go on. You want to explain so, that? So this is an art piece of artwork that was displayed last year in 2013 at the conference. Okay. Uh, it was a student-led conference uh, workshop, excuse me, uh, where the peer, the youth student students. What age group? High school. High school. Okay. We're teaching about porn. Okay. All the different aspects of porn, and this is a a plate that was displayed as you entered into the workshop and it's all things vagina as you can see um, <clears throat> which is really ironic that you know we have to be cautious what we who we share this information with and yet the Oregon Department of Education and others there are suggesting that this is best practice for our children but I mean you know it, really I mean I've got to say I mean uh, hopefully the kids are not listening and whatever but here, here's some of the. This is the plate, right? Can you show that on TV? Oh, you can show this on, on TV, and I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read what's on it. Okay. You know what I mean? It says there's vagina in one of them. You see it? You see it right there? It says vagina. Then there's rose festival, so to speak. In all due respect, there's a personal uh, description, if you will, of a vagina, and then uh, there's a there's a photo, if you will, of a vagina, and then there's a there's a woman basically. There's a caption here. It said, "Don't believe them when they tell you it smells like rose petals when it's supposed to smell like pussy." Yeah, this was being handed out to kids. Oh, it was displayed. Displayed. 
this was being displayed mm -hmm. to our youth at this conference, mm -hmm. okay? okay? All right? I think I got it. All right? Mm -hmm. By adults, not okay. kids. Well, right. The, right? the adults I mean, are the ones who plan the conference right, 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 and, right, right, and right, sing right, right. the conference. And, you know, in all due respect, kids are curious. Oh, sure, absolutely. We're all curious, and we're being taught by parents because that's what we're supposed to do. Wait, 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 haven't you got most of it? Uh, I got most of it. Yeah. It's on our website. It's, it's well. yeah. on, and it's on the website, folks. I mean, parents hey, rights and ed. Parents rights and And mm -hmm. trust me, when you get this show or whatever, and you see the and the, and the website, email it to the governor, email it to the all your elected officials, all of them. Email the website. It's all there. Now, I haven't showed you the rest of the paraphernalia. Let's go through some of that paraphernalia, the other stuff that's being handed out. You know, trinkets, you know, when you go to a conference or whatever. Right. People hand out stuff, exactly. buttons and candy. Uh, so this is Valentine Day cards. Valentine Day. Yes, and this is the Oregon Health Authorities on the back there. Read it. Um, roses are red, violets are blue. I'm wearing my Nuva ring. Now I'm ready for you. Your next one is you're like my birth control implant. I've got you under my skin, and I just want to pause that. Yeah. Hold this up. Parents need to understand that uh, by law, students um, can get com reproductive services at any age. At, for example, a health clinic or a school-based health center, or at least they have to be told where to get that. Mm -hmm. So you really need to keep your antennas up and know what you're signing when it comes to the kind of care that your child mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. getting, mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of this is done behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So, wow. wow. Um, the only thing that can come between us is a condom. Wow. My love for you is like the IUD, long-lasting and dependable. So vaginal exams, testicular exams, Jeez. different things that you may never know your child, birth control and such, you may never know, uh, yet you have to deal with the physical perhaps repercussions if there's a, a, a complication with another medication or just the emotional aspect of things. Mm -hmm. We have uh, flavored lube. We have a button. Put them up there. Put, hold them up there a little bit. Flavored, flavored lube. lube. Now, these are being handed out yes. at the conference mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and throughout the district, I take it. Through, no, I, the, I can't state. say oh, the district. The conference, but, the but conference. Basically at the conference. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can't say. Yeah. Okay. And then a button dry humping saves lives. And these are buttons right there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Masturbation doesn't break hearts. Wow. Tell that to someone who's, wow. you know, there you go. There you go. Someone who's got addiction to porn I mean uh, the revolution begins here and that implies it's all up to the child mm -hmm. in one of the booklets that Lisa mentions here it talks about there being no universal right or wrong mm -hmm. it's all up to the child what identity they want for today for tomorrow um, you know if they're going to have uh, sex or not or or even with multiple partners. Right. Hmm. So it flies in the face of of values and beliefs that you know we as teachers and I am a teacher, you're you're serving a variety of, of families with right. all sorts of values right. and beliefs. And so to impose these type of messages without keeping that in mind is is trespassing on the hearts and the minds of, mm -hmm. of children. It's usurping the rights of parents and mm -hmm. guardians. And you have to deprogram. I mean, you really have to deprogram your children when they get home when they are exposed to content like this. The, the idea at the conference, the idea that safe, this was said by multiple people, safe sex or healthy sexuality starts with a conversation. Most parents don't know that their kids who've gone to this conference right. have even seen this. Yeah. I was wow. sitting in one workshop well, I, next I to a, a young girl that was in seventh grade, and I, I felt so bad for her um, because that workshop was about pleasure and how to bring that. It was called uh, Lessening the Taboo, Making Pleasure a Part of Your Healthy Sexuality education. So that particular conference was not geared towards youth. She was a youth helper in the class, but it was geared towards teachers so that they could bring in, make pleasure more of part of the healthy sexuality education, again, under the, the name of that. So there, the, the idea here is to teach kids and let them know about 
that sex is pleasurable at a very young age. That's why in Oregon we have K through 12. Mm -hmm healthy sexuality so you teach them to masturbate and that that's all fine and normal do it with yourself with other people while as according to some of these materials why someone is watching and then of course that's kind of a gradual moving on to other behaviors and mm -hmm. and porn is condoned and all of this and it's very very tragic it's mm -hmm. sad and it's tragic and it's not what i think most parents well, as a parent myself mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, because when we think of uh, sex education and and most parents don't know when it's happening you have an opt-out in Oregon so they might send a letter home and if you don't want your kid to do it you have to make sure you find that letter and sign it and send it back hmm. so you may never you even know. see yeah. it yeah. so yeah. your kids gonna go through it right. and so you don't know what they've gotten and what kind of conversation to have but a lot of parents we think well that's okay because when i was a kid mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know we learned about you know your Remember body baby, changes yeah. Yeah, and how yeah, that right, happens right, administration right, and, right, right. and where babies come right. from and all the right. biology of it and right. and that's what most people think but that is not, not what they're doing here. Well, that is not comprehensive sexuality education that is an anything goes um access all about access access to a clinic um, and what Lori mentioned that in our state and i i don't know if this is nationwide but but it includes school-based health centers so if your child goes into a, a school-based health center that you have in your district they can self-refer for what is reproductive health services which would be mm -hmm. they can get an iud implant mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. vaginal exams mm -hmm. whether they give them on at, at that clinic or not but they'll refer them without parents knowledge they can also at 14 and above get re self refer for mental health services mm -hmm. so if a teenager wants to go in there and talk to a counselor about their crazy parents because mm -hmm. i think most teenagers think their parents are mm -hmm. crazy mm -hmm. um and they don't know what counsel their child is getting. Mm -hmm. Identity. A lot of counsel is they're encouraged to have conversations about students' identity and orientation and whatnot. And frankly, that's an invasion of the rights of parents. Mm -hmm. That's that's um, that's meddling and tram trespassing on the hearts and the minds of your child, and you may never know. Um, and you know, the bottom line is local control. Mm -hmm. The Oregon Department of Education, DHS, um, Oregon Health Corps, all these state agencies, Cascade AIDS projects, Planned Parenthood, it's coming from above and people need to understand they, the districts are responsible for the parents and how the parents and the guardians and the community members want sex education to look like and include what kind of parameters are going to be around, what will and will not be discussed, what, what videos, what um, um, additional supplemental materials are brought in. That's a local control decision. It's not our superintendent of public instruction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not these other organizations. It's local control. So that that's where it starts, and that's where it should be. But it's signed up, signed off though, by state superintendent, by the governor. I mean, you know, people yeah. who, right. who have the checks. I mean, who right. can write the, the government checks. Right. But Fair? that, they have to understand, I and mean, that, Herb Gray has yes. has stated to me, what are districts so afraid of when it comes to the Oregon Department of Education? You know, if mm -hmm. you say, no, we're not going to do this, thank you very much, and you have parents who are concerned about the safety and the health and the well-being of their children, and they're going to start... <laughs> You know, making a ruckus, the Oregon Department of Education is going to think twice. I mean, mm -hmm. they're you know they they don't have as as much power. The power is in the local communities. Mm -hmm. By law, the power is with the local school districts. So, yeah. Lori, when when did you first get involved in this piece? Let's talk about that for a minute. You know, in regards to parents' rights and and education, you went on and put this website out there. When did you start on that piece? How well, in 2010, I went went to that conference. I was on, prior to that, I was on a curriculum review committee mm -hmm. in my district. Mm -hmm. As Lisa said, you need to have your antennas up when you mm -hmm. hear health, safety, bullying, all these kind of words, you have to, so I wanted to know 
I wanted to know more about you know, what kind of curriculum the Oregon Department of Education was going to encourage us to use as a district when it came to teaching about sex and, and health. And so it was during that time that I went to this conference and saw this and then thought, oh my goodness. And so we have, I was fortunate to bump into Lisa and a number of other people mm -hmm. um, who are really concerned about the rights of parents and guardians. We're concerned about the safety and well being of children. Mm -hmm. And we love education. We love, I mean, schools. I mean, I'm a teacher. I yeah, love yeah, to learn. Right, 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 but um, I don't, uh, there is a place and there's a line as to where I should meddle and where I'm off limits and I am serving the parents and mm -hmm. the guardians. Mm -hmm. And so, fortunately, it was over that course of time that um, you know we've been looking at this and it, it it's a lot of information there's a lot of pieces to it but again the buck stops and we want to know why the superintendent of public instruction oregon health authority oregon department of education and others are endorsing this well tell me this uh, you're a teacher mm -hmm. when you first got involved in this deal did you share this with your principal or your superintendent mm -hmm. or you or the legislature or no? well i was i did a lot of research okay and I started to connect the dots. Mm -hmm. And frankly, my head was spinning a bit. Mm -hmm. And I thought, a busy parent. I'm not a parent. I was never able to have children. I have nieces and nephews. And, and As a teacher, you're a parent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I love children. Mm -hmm. I care for them. And I love the role of parents and guardians. And so um, I, I forgot my train of thought because I was thinking of all yeah. these children. But um, so... I did not tell my principal. I just asked lots of questions. To the principal? I asked lots of questions to the principal. I went to the conference and asked lots of questions. And you I didn't wasn't, teach this. You yeah, didn't and teach I this. wasn't the expert in all this. And I think. Um, didn't just, you work on that curriculum committee, though? Tell yes. them what happened with the curriculum committee that you. The curriculum. Oh, what committee? At the conference? Came up? At the conference? No, this was in the, the district. In the district. Yeah, and this is happening across the state. You know, districts are reviewing their policies, mm -hmm. sex ed policies, sex ed health, sex ed policies, and a lot of them, unfortunately, they hear these nice sounding words, they mm -hmm. rubber stamp it, and they're off to another policy. Mm -hmm. And the words are so vague and nebulous that anything can. Be but clear. you guys came up with the curriculum that we you did. felt that the community wanted. The mm -hmm. whole the the whole we, committee. We, we spent a lot of time looking at. And then you mm -hmm. presented it right to the it, school was it similar district. To this? No, 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 absolutely no, 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 not. I want to know. Absolutely what, what, not. What, what curriculum were yeah. we presenting here? <laughs> we 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 looked at some of our own curriculum. Okay. And we looked at the, some of the curriculum that they the Oregon Department of Education brought for us to view, okay. not liking much of it, altering some of it. And when we were going down a road they didn't like, mm -hmm. Brad Victor mm -hmm. and Jessica mm -hmm. The sexuality others. specialist, uh, remember okay. him? Yes. Yes. yes, yes. With the Oregon Department of Ed. They didn't like that they swooped in and they gave us a two day training on national sex ed standards. Um, and then we kind of went through some rigmarole and the summer happened and pretty much they, they just dismissed a lot of what we recommended. So it was, Kind of a, a show game. It was just was. So Brad Victor, the sexuality specialist, which is, again, he's been the go-to guy. Keynote speaker. He, well, he was not Mo the keynote moderator. speaker. Moderator. But he's the, well, he's the he's headed the, up okay, the yeah. conference. He's, the yeah, yeah. he's been the go-to guy the show, yeah. for more than a decade with the Oregon Department of Education Gee. for uh, what do we do about sex ed. Well, let me show you. And so he came in behind okay. their committee and said well you don't want that here use this and we have a grant for you which is called a wise grant working to institutionalize sexuality education and part of that grant guess what they give you money to go where to the adolescent sexuality grant from where uh the state it's it's, a, it's from the Grove feds? packard foundation there's he he worked for the Oregon Department of Education. He, he was doing this on Oregon Department of Education time. time. Right. Dime, our dime. Yes. And so. where was the superintendent? Had to, somebody had to sign off on somebody that. Somebody signed off on it, but it sounded nice, you see. That's that's it sounded the thing. nice this handing out condoms to kids. I mean, give me let, a break. Let me folks. see. Don't listen to Jesus them what they Christ. found. I mean, it, 
Look how big that is. So, so he, he would come in, and this is what's happened with districts across the state. He would come in and say, well, that, that curriculum's not very good because you're not fully in compliance. But this will help you be in compliance, making a difference, making proud choices, flash curriculum. Those are just to name a few that are pro mm -hmm. they're all over the state of Oregon. And, and districts, I mean, they're... They and got, they go, they okay... Know. That sounds good. Oh, a grant money? We and it's and free curriculum. Adults, I mean, are they excited? But they, they, they don't. They're probably some of them are carrying some of this Bruce, stuff. They're not seeing that part. See, this is kept under wraps. But they have it. They have it in they, purses. And all kinds I know. Stuff in their pockets. It's and, kept under wraps. That part Jesus. from the dis district. So the district goes with it. I was on a curriculum. A committee because I heard about it in when my. When did you get involved in it? Um, well, when my daughter was in sixth grade. Sixth grade. Sixth grade. How old yes. is she now? She's a senior in high school. What? A senior in high school and you were saying something about that then and you were, yes no and reaction I'm, no there was a reaction and and they they said no we don't want that curriculum then which was making a difference and right. we just used the health books we had brand new health books that had almost everything there and found out wow that was fine and they added a few pieces mm -hmm. miscellaneous mm -hmm. pieces and it was okay and because then they did a committee and they did it right then um last uh, two years ago um, almost two years ago in February, I heard from a principal, another school, something about a, a health curriculum. And of course, and I tennis. say, well, what do you mean? Um, I want to be on that committee. And I found out about it and it was about sex ed uh, curriculum. I went on and uh, joined the, the committee, but it really the committee was run directed by a principal mm -hmm, in the mm -hmm. district and a uh, few teachers and and you know they're just sort of all asked to be there and and i was the volunteer parent and and it was like well what are we gonna do here's the law this is what we're told again the comprehensive the law yeah we have to stay within the law. We have to teach all of this stuff. The administrative rules. Right. The, written by the Oregon Department of Education. Which right. was influenced by Brad Victor, the sexuality specialist. Right, right, right. So um, I talked about, you know, what it says about abstinence, what that really means. Let's encourage students to not engage in sexual behavior while they're in high school. Because what parent wouldn't be happy with their kid not engaging in sex while they're a minor? I think most people would be okay with that. But in any event, we got the cur curriculum. We got nine different curriculums that came in. And nobody really read them. And one was the Making a Difference, once again. And we, the recommendation from the committee was, well, let's just adopt all nine of them. And then we'll let the teacher decide. So then it went to the school board and there was a room full of parents who were opposed and said, no, we don't like that. Asked lots of questions. Asked lots of mm -hmm. questions, was concerned about what was in the curriculum. And um, then the, the board approved all of the curriculum. We're going to trust the teacher. Uh and they approved it. But you, you're, you're a school board member now. Well, you're a you know what? I wasn't. How long have you, you been a school board member? Uh, almost a year and a half. I About wasn't. A year and a half. I was on the committee. That was before I was on the school board. Did you run on this platform? No, just as a concerned parent. Just concerned parent? Yeah. But when did you introduce it to the school board? Did you say anything uh, to the school My board? very first school board meeting as a school board <laughs> member was when the curriculum was yes. coming up for adoption. Right. Okay. What happened? Uh, it was a 6 1 vote to, pe to accept the curriculum. I take it the one you were out. I would have been the one, yes. Wow. And and I did wow. have somebody else on the board tell me right afterwards at the end of the meeting. He said, yes. "Oh, Lisa, it's not going to be that bad." It's just yeah. affecting the, and, excuse me, it's just affecting those I, poor kids up in I northeast Portland. What the heck's the problem that, here? That I understand the thinking on yeah. that. I really do, and that that's the question because most people and parents think. Well, that's not going to happen in my school. My teacher's nice. And, and my teacher's mm -hmm. nice, and I like them. And and I would say, if that's what you think, it probably is happening to some extent. At some level, something probably not good is happening in your child's classroom if they're having sex ed, healthy sexuality, any of that stuff. It's pro You need, as parents... Take someone else with you and go and say, I want to see the plan of instruction. I want to see all materials. I want to see uh, videos, teaching aids, what websites you're sending them to. Because um, there's a lot of list of yeah, there are, parenthood there are, websites that they send them to. But there are parents who are, are busy. My sister's mm -hmm. a single mom. She can't do, do that. There might be an mm -hmm. hour window mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So there are 
other ways to be persistent about that. On our website, parentsrightsined.net, there are some recommendations. I mean, not everybody can take time off of work mm -hmm. and go, mm -hmm. but you can have a conversation with your child, ask the teacher, you could email a teacher, phone the teacher, you know, that they would put some examples in an envelope, you know, not examples, put everything. You want everything that's going to be used, leave it at the desk, front desk at the office, and you can pick it up on your, when it's convenient for you. Um, you can, um, if you are able to go to a school board meeting, I always find it kind of fun to read some of this stuff out loud verbatim. I mean, it's, it's a little uncomfortable, but the ironic thing is, is this is for minor wow. children. If a, adults are kind of squirming about this, but, but there are some creative ways that parents could get wind of this if they can't go to the the school. Wow, lady. Well, you know what, Nordius, we got about two minutes left. We, we need another two hours. So, but we really encourage people <laughs> to go to okay. the website. The website. The key is the website. Go to parentsrightineducation.net. Well, parents, just spelled out P A R E N T S. It's on the screen. Is it on the screen? Okay, keep it on the screen there. Parentsrightined.net. Go there. You've got all the goodies there. And the all, the information. all the information. That's um, that there's was. some ways to help parents, good, empowering good, parents. Good, good. You want but, to empower but the parents. Thing I want to hit, the last thing I want to get across here. Yes. Call your legislature. Yes. Call because it. we're paying for it. They've You're got paying wind for of this. It. They're, they're yeah. getting wind yeah, but, of this. But, but we want to get the public out there. they mm -hmm. got to get out there. A lot of folks just don't look at the news. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of folks can't even afford a website. Mm -hmm. I mean, a, a computer, whatever. Right. we got to get the folks who are really hit, getting hit on this stuff. And the only way they can get the information is through the people that they elect in the office. Mm -hmm. So I'm throwing it out to yes. Congressman Earl Blumenauer. This is part of his district aspect of it. Senator Ron Whiten, who has been very passionate about uh, the minority community and the like. Uh, Retta Smith, um, who happens to be a commissioner. This is her district, if you will. County commissioner, if you will, from Multnomah County. Your state rep and, and yeah. state senator. That's the who you state need to call rep, right yeah, now. The, the, and you well, do the not superintendent have to be the schools. expert. You don't even know. Oh, you don't even have to know. You don't need to ask No, no. Exactly. The, the experts just, are out there. They're being taught. They're getting yes. paid. How to pass this stuff to get so, paid. Mm -hmm. It's about the dollars. I'd like to know who signed those checks. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can find that out. So yeah. please email this to them. Call your call the folks you just elected, and ask yeah. them the questions. Show them the show them the show. Oh, you know, I'm just a facilitator, if you will. And it's I'm just not a, even a partisan or a religious issue. This is your children. That's right. Your Our children. future, this yes. country, future of this country. Mm -hmm. Folks, thank you very much for being a part of us. We're, we're going to follow up with this, and hopefully you guys are going to come back okay. and fill us in, right? Yes, sure. Sir? Okay. Thank you again for being with us, and um, it's really, it hasn't been a pleasure this week. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm on the roll on this aspect. Of it. We do have an upcoming election. We've got about two years now. This has to be one of the platform issues. Mm -hmm. And hopefully Channel 8 and others who are doing these so-called interviews of these candidates, this becomes part of the issue mm -hmm. in terms of how they're going to address mm -hmm. this. I think it's a very important piece. Mm -hmm. It's your dollars, and it's your kids, mm -hmm. and it's your parents' kids. It's, it's your neighbor's kids. Get together. Talk about this issue. Mm -hmm. If you have to show it over and over and over, and you've got my number, I'm right here, and you've got their numbers with the website. Again, thank you very much for being with us. We'll see thank you me. next time. Take care. Thanks, folks. Appreciate it.